Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. This tutorial is part of a series for creating a pattern from an existing pair of jeans. Now this is part three in a three part series. So we recommend that you watch part one and part two first because we use some of those elements in this particular tutorial. But if you're ready for part three, let's go ahead and get started. Once we're done with the truing, the next step is taking our outlines and creating our individual patterns from them. We're going to start with the jeans back and from this outline, we're actually going to end up with three individual patterns. So you end up with the jeans back leg, the back yoke, and then a back pocket pattern from this one outline. So go ahead and grab your tracing paper and we're going to lay it over our outline. And it should be slightly bigger because for this, we are going to be adding hem allowance and whatever seam allowance we need. So let me go ahead and pin this down so it'll be a little bit easier to see. The first one I'm going to draw is going to be the jeans back. So for the most part, I can just follow along with my outline. If there's already seam allowance, which there is from my inner leg seam, my side seam, and then this curved crotch, I can just draw directly on the line. Any notches that I have, I'm also going to transfer those. Now once I get up here, the, since this is two separate patterns, I'm going to draw right here, separating it. Now you can go ahead and draw and then add your seam allowance, whatever you want your seam allowance to be. To be. I'm going to go ahead and do a half inch. or since this is already pinned into place and holding it, I can just draw my line when I get here, go ahead and draw my half inch seam allowance, and then we don't see this line at all. It's whatever you wanna do. If it's easier to draw this and then add it, then do it that way. Any adjustments you made from chewing your pattern, that's gonna be your new outline. So I would follow along this orange line instead of the outside black line, which in this view, it doesn't really look like that much of a difference. And then the grain line, again, is going to be going from the top of the pants down towards the bottom of the pants. Don't forget that for the bottom of the pants, you will have to add the hem allowance if it's not already done. So here would be my pattern piece for the jeans back. And you can see I added my seam allowance up here. So this dashed line is the original line. And then with seam allowance, made sure I transferred all my notches. Also, I have my pocket placement marks because this is going to be important when we're trying to place that back pocket. I have my information over here, what it is I need to cut to, and then make sure that you check the fabric content of the tag inside your jeans. Is it just regular denim or does there some stretchy fabric with it? Because you definitely want to make sure that you use the same fabric that's in your original pair so that your pattern works out. So now we're going to tackle our back yoke pattern. So it's just going to be this area here and I've actually already done it. So the dashed lines are the original lines and I don't need to add any seam allowance here or here because it was already included just on top and bottom. So you can see my new lines. I also made sure I did my grain line. I label what it is and then how many I need to cut out. So we only need to cut out two because it's just strictly going on the back leg here. Also, don't forget to mark your belt loop placement X's. Next, we need to make sure that we create a pattern piece for the back pocket. And I already have it done. So the dash line is the original line. I just drew a line connecting this top part. And then I went ahead and added seam allowance. Now I did a half inch all the way around except for this top portion. This is going to be an inch because we're going to have it be a little bit more finished. Since it's the back pocket, I need to make sure I cut two. So I go ahead and add that information. Let's go ahead and look at the jeans front so we can create the individual patterns. Now this one's a little bit more confusing because we have all this front pocket area to deal with. So we're just going to take out one part at a time. So the first thing is make sure that you transfer any of your final lines from truing your patterns. You can see my new side seam is the orange line here. So it's the same curve as the back. And then I also corrected it over here. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my tracing paper over it. And the first thing that we're gonna create a pattern for is going to be the jeans front. Now I'm gonna go along with my inner leg seam and my outer leg seam and it's gonna be no seam allowance added here. 
because it's already included, we don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna follow up along my side seam. This time I'm going on my orange line here if you have any changes. Once I get to this red line, which is the top of the pocket, I'm gonna go along this. Now this doesn't have any seam allowance, so I'm just gonna make this a dash line. I'm gonna curve around and I'm gonna go along the top of this waistline and then do this crotch line where I also need to add seam allowance here and here. So I'm looking at my notes. So this part of the pattern is not gonna exist in the just the jeans front leg. So I've already done it so you can see what it looks like. And I know it looks like there's a lot here, but I'm gonna explain it again. So side seam, same, I'm just following my line. I go up to my red line, which is this dash line, with the waistline, and then the crotch curve here. And then this is with the seam allowance. So that's the same. I added seam allowance here, here, and here. So you can see I'm not even copying over this part of the pattern. This is what the front of your jeans look like without that front pocket area. This X is marking where the belt loop placement is, so I'm doing that on the jeans front. I'm transferring any notches I have to where they are in the seam allowance. This one, this is a mistake, I meant to put it on the seam allowance. I have my stitching lines for putting in the zipper, so I put left stitching lines because it's only gonna be on the left side. Now you'll notice this is a dashed line and then it turns into a solid line. I'm just marking where the center front line is because that's gonna come in handy later when we're doing the zipper. So I just put CF line and just drew an arrow. And then this of course is marking where the bottom of my zipper is gonna fall here. So I just went ahead and put that on the seam line. So then that's gonna take care of the jeans front. I have the grain line, the information, and that I need to cut to. Out of this top area here, we're gonna end up with three individual pattern pieces and this is gonna take care of the side front and pocket pieces. So we're gonna just take the first one, which is going to be the side front, which is indicated here by my green line. And if you were to look at your pants, it's gonna be this piece right here. So it's gonna go along the green line. I'm not gonna worry about adding any seam allowance here because I'm just gonna finish the raw edge since it's on the inside of the pocket. So green line to my side seam. The seam allowance is already included here, so I'm not adding it. And then I'll do a dash line for the waistline because I do need to add seam allowance here. Again, there's no waistband here, so it's just the waistline. And here is my pattern piece for this. So let's line this up so I can show you. Okay, so going along the green line, the side seam, this is the waistline area and then I added a half inch seam allowance. So that's that extra space here. And then don't forget to transfer any notches. So any pattern pieces we're creating that encompass a notch, such as here or down here for later pieces, you definitely wanna add those since there's so many pieces that are gonna be layered on top of each other in this area. We wanna make sure that everything is going to line up. So then I just label it as jeans, side front, and I need to cut two out of the same denim fabric. Next, we're gonna do the front pocket. So this may be a little bit confusing, but let's see if we can make it clear. So for this one, I'm gonna follow along the blue line, and this blue line doesn't have any seam allowance, so I need to add it. Go along this blue line to the side seam, to the red line, so the top of the pocket, to the waistline, back to the blue line. So it's gonna be only this big on top, and then it's gonna go along the curve down the side and over here. So let's take a look at that one. So it's a little bit more clear. So the dash line is just the regular line and then I added seam allowance, a half inch seam allowance. Same thing here, seam allowance is added to the top and to this top pocket area I added seam allowance. Now you'll see I have my notches here and here, which I made sure that I transferred this X we only have to do for that very uh, jeans front piece, so I'm not worrying about it for any of my other pocket pieces. And then I went ahead and labeled it jeans front pocket and we're gonna cut two out of a lightweight cotton. You're not gonna cut this out of denim because it's the actual inside pocket part and we don't want it to be bulgy in there. The last one that we're gonna do for this one outline is going to be the front stay. 
Now this is going to be sewn to the back of our pocket piece that we had, so it's also part of the pocket. For this one, we're going to start off the same. Along the blue line, again we need to add seam allowance here. You're going to go up the side seam. But see, we're not stopping here at the red line this time. Now we're going all the way up to the waistline and then all the way along the waistline until we get back to the blue line. So it's going to be more of a squarish, I guess, except it's kind of curved on this side, so I guess not. So here you can see what that pattern piece looks like. Well, I guess I just need to finish extending it here. But this is just the general outline, plus the saw line is where I added seam allowance. I don't need to do it here. I added seam allowance here. And again, I made sure that I transferred my notches so we have something to line up. And then I labeled it. So it's front stay, cut to, and this would also be cut out of lightweight cotton. We've previously created our pattern pieces for the fly, so that means we can move on to the waistband. To create this pattern, grab your flexible tape measure, and the first thing I'm going to do is measure the width of the waistband. So going from the top of the waistband to the seam line of the waistline. Whatever that number is, mine looks like it's about uh, one and a half, you're going to double it. So write that number down. Then you're going to take the flexible tape measure and you're going to measure the length of the waistband. So I'm starting here on the edge and then I'm going to go all the way around until I get to this other end. And then you're going to write down that number and we're going to create a rectangle based on the width and the length of the waistband. Here's at least part of the start of my pattern. Now, of course, you can't see the whole thing because it's really long, but this is going to be the length of the waistband and then this is the width. Now, again, we doubled the width of our waistband because it is folded in half in our pants, so it needs to be twice as wide. The next thing I'm going to do after I have my basic outline is I'm going to draw a dash line dividing the width in half. So it's going to go right down the center of the waistband down the whole length. Now I need to make placement marks onto my waistband here for everything that's on my waistband. So I have button, buttonholes, I have the placement of the belt loops, and I also want to mark where the side seams are and everything like that. So to do that, I'm going to start at this end here, and that's going to start at this end of the waistband, and I'm just measuring. So I'm measuring from the end to where the middle of my button is. It's about one and a quarter. So then I'm going to measure one and a quarter, mark that with a pin, and then that's going to become where the button is going to be. I've already marked this previously so I knew where it was. If you're worried about from here to here where that placement is going to be, this dotted line is actually this top part of the waistband because remember we take this and we fold it in half so this fold line ends up right here at the top. So I could just line this up here, take a straight pin, poke it through, and then that's going to tell me where that placement is. It's going to be the same thing for my belt loops right here. I could just put a pin and mark the center and then that's going to tell me where I need to have a placement for a belt loop. So you can see this is kind of closer to the dashed line. It's because this is sewn right to the top of the waistband. So I kind of do a combination of both where I'm measuring, I'm kind of making a placement, and then this kind of helps me where it needs to be placed in between the dotted line and the bottom line. I also have where I want the side seam to be because that we kind of want to match up. So for that one, I just make a square mark. So I have X's for belt loops, the circle is going to be for a button, and the square is going to mark where there's going to be a seam line in the pants. So we're just going to move this down a little bit. I have another belt loop placement here, which I measured. And then, in the very center back of the pants, I have a belt loop, and then I have the center back seam. So I measured where that was, and I have an X here, and then where the, the center back seam is, I'm just going to put a notch. So then I have something to sort of line up with my waistband and I just go all the way around doing the same thing. 
So I have another belt loop here. Here's the other side seam. And again, I did this ahead of time so I know where they are. And then the very last thing is going to be the buttonhole. So I could just line this up. So the edge is lining up with this line here and the end is lining up with the end. And I place a pin at the beginning of the buttonhole and then at the end of the buttonhole. And then I just drew a line to create it. So once you have all your marks done, and again, the marks are just on one side. I'm not doing anything over here. Um, then I'm going to grab some tracing paper so that I can go ahead and start drawing my pattern for the waistband because all I need to do then is just include seam allowance on all sides. Here is now the pattern with seam allowance included so you can see it's a little bit bigger. I did half inch top, bottom, and then both ends as well. So that's a half inch seam allowance around the whole thing. I made sure that I transferred all my marks that I had on my previous thing. I even included the fold line showing, so it shows right where the center of that waistband is. I'm including grain line and then the information. So it's jeans, waistband, I'm gonna cut one out of my fabric and then one out of interfacing. Next, I'm going to create the pattern piece for the belt loops. Now, this is actually a very simple pattern piece. You can see there's really not that much to it. Instead of creating individual little pattern piece for a single belt loop, what we do is we create a strip, and this strip is folded and then sewn, and then cut into pieces for each individual loop. So it just makes it a little bit easier to do it at one time and then cut it up instead of dealing with one little tiny loop at a time. So get the measurements for our pattern piece. The first thing I'm gonna do is measure the width. And I'm gonna take this measurement and multiply it by four. So mine's about a half inch. So the width of my pattern is two inches in width. Then I'm gonna measure the length of one of my loops. And they should pretty much be all the same. So you only need to do one. Mine is about two and a quarter. I'm gonna take this and multiply it by the number of loops that I have. So I have five of these loops. And to that measurement, I'm going to add about three extra inches or so. It's better to be a little bit bigger than to be smaller because we also have to account for the seam allowance that the loop is turned under, both top and bottom. So length measurement times the number of loops, then just add about three inches. That's gonna give me the length, and you can see it's just one long rectangle and uh, you don't have to worry about adding any seam allowance because we've pretty much already taken care of it. Last but not least, we have one more pattern to do and this is really optional if you wanna do it or not. So that's gonna be this little tiny pocket, I call it the fifth pocket, and it's usually only on one side of your pants. Uh, I have it on the right side. I don't know if it changes, but it really doesn't matter. So to create the pattern, this is what I'd like to do. I just measure the top, the dashed lines are the finished size, so this is the top. You can go ahead and kind of take it out. So then I measure this side, and that's gonna be this measurement here. And then I measure the other side. And you can see this one's a little bit longer than this one. That's because the bottom of the pocket lines up with that right side front piece that we created. So it's a little bit of a curve and therefore it's not perfectly straight. So I do just these three sides first. Then I'm gonna grab my side front, which we've created before, and it's actually gonna go, I have it upside down because I wanna make sure that it's gonna be going in the same direction that the pocket's gonna be fitting on my pants. So this side is the side seam, that's why I have it upside down. So I'm gonna place it on the table. I'm gonna place my pattern on top of it to see where it's gonna fit in relation to the thing. And if you wanna make sure you're placing it in the right spot, measure from here to the side seam. For me, that's about an inch and a quarter. And then once I have it in position, about right there, it's about an inch and a quarter. Then I can go ahead and draw the bottom so it lines up perfectly where it's going to sit. I also take my straight pins, I don't have it on cardboard right now, but then I can also punch through the paper. So that way I have a placement, you can just barely see it right there, I'll just make it a little bit darker. 
So then when I finish creating this pocket, I know exactly where it needs to be placed on my side front. So these marks would just be for the right side because this pocket is only for the right side. And then the only other thing I did was just add seam allowance. So half inch, half inch, one inch. I'm not doing seam allowance down here at the bottom because it's just, I'm just gonna do what they did and just leave the raw edge and finish it. So that's how I created that. Now I have all my pattern pieces. I definitely recommend doing a muslin so you can test out your pattern pieces and make sure it's gonna fit before buying more expensive fabric. If you need help with your assembly, definitely check out our site at professorpincushion.com for our jean assembly tutorial. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at professorpincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.